Cyclocross Magazine here with Katie Compton yeah. after a win here in Louisville. So what was your start strategy coming out of this? Um, I just wanted to get a good start and then um, like I, it was a kind of a long stretch straight away and slightly uphill before we make a left hand into the mud so I just want to be at the front but not on the front so um, it, it was pretty manageable. Um, I think I landed, I got into the mud maybe fourth or fifth or something and then it's such a wide start stretch I could just kind of roll up on the right the inside and got behind um, Magli and then um, we just kind of I think big line of us at the start so and then yeah. the, the next time we saw you there was a gap so yeah. what, how did that happen where did that open up and um, I think it opened up at one of the downhills I think maybe one of the downhills towards the end of the first lap um, it's such a heavy course like it may not look like it's that muddy but it rides really heavy so um, it was kind of, I felt like we were racing in slow motion because you want to go faster, but the conditions kind of don't allow that. Um, so I think there is like me and Katie and Magley and Ellen and Noble and Emma, I think we all had a bit of a gap. And I think by the second downhill on the last lap, um, me and Katie and Magley got a little bit more of a gap. And then I think Katie and I finally opened up a gap in everybody else, maybe at the end of the first lap, second lap. All kind of blends together <laughs> somewhere. So when you yeah. know that you're riding alone like that and it yeah. happens early on and yeah. you know this is going to be my race, I'm out here, I'm riding without anyone visibly in front of me or behind yeah. me, Where? Yeah. what does that do as far as your strategy? How does that shift? Um, I mean, I'm just trying to maintain. I was trying to be smooth. I was enjoying the downhills and trying not to go too deep um, just so I have something for tomorrow because tomorrow's going to be another hard day and I'm pretty sure I'll probably ride a similar course. So. Um, it's it's hard to you know gauge your effort and still keep pushing so you don't you know do something dumb and lose lose your lead, um, but also not go too deep and just make it too hard of a day for you know, Sunday's race. Yeah. So with it being a two-day block of racing and a, a reasonably important race tomorrow, yeah. it's fair to say. Yeah. Uh, what do you are you thinking about that while you're racing? You're just thinking don't use too many moves right now and try and save something for tomorrow. I, I was a little bit and part, like you don't want to do that too much because your timing's off and you mess certain sections up so I tried to um, you know carry my speed and attack sections I needed to attack but then just kind of relax and be calm through some of the pedally sections so um, I definitely manage my effort but you never know I've managed my effort before and still suck the next day so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so at what point did it become clear that if you could keep this gap it was going to be a win? Um, probably with two laps to go, I would say, because like the gap was pretty consistent and then it started growing a little bit, so I don't know what it was at the end, but um, I just was kind of keeping track of where I was compared to Katie and just, uh, yeah, try to stay on it, stay on the gas a little bit. So it was a little muddy today, mm -hmm. um, not anything really, really crazy, but yeah. it, it certainly plays into the course. Were you pitting at all? I did. I took one bike change mainly because like the drivetrain was getting a little bit mucky, and I hate it when my bike's not shifting really well. <laughs> and it's easy to like um, bend a derailleur, break a derailleur, miss shifts, get chain stuck when the drivetrain gets muddy. So um, I took a pit bike. I think with one lap to go, um, and it was pretty perfect. So uh, yeah, I also one of the bikes has white tape on it, and I didn't want to get dirty. So I was like, just wait, <laughs> wait till the last lap till you need the bike. <laughs> So you're back in the U.S. for this weekend only. Mm -hmm. um, did that do anything to the logistics of setting up to, to race with enough equipment to, to do it and then still have it all when you get back to Europe? Because you're just here for a little bit. Yeah. You can't bring it all with you. Yeah, it's tough. Like, luckily, um, the way I do my contract with Trek, you know, they give me enough bikes and equipment for me to have bikes in Europe and bikes in the U.S. So it's still a little tricky because my, my Euro bikes are now all dialed and set up. I've got them, like, just how I want them. And then my U.S. bikes, like, I haven't had spent the time on them, so I'm still kind of dialing it in. So um, that's kind of annoying, but I think I got the bike set, and I, I felt pretty good today, and the position felt really good. So um, I feel like <laughs> that's taken care of. So when I come back for nationals, domestic bikes will be set, and um, I don't have to worry about equipment. Was this sort of a test run for nationals bikes? Um, kind of, but also just to see how I feel with the travel back from Europe. Um, I've always gone to the U.S. to Europe and had to race, and now it's like Europe to U.S., so I just kind of see the difference of it um, and kind of get a feel for how my legs are going to go. Um, but yeah, so far so good. I mean, I feel okay, and um, this direction seems a lot easier than U.S. to Europe, so 
Any idea why that might be? Um, well, it's just basically flying um, uh, east to west is e easier on the body than west to east because of the way the daylight and your body responds. You just stay up later and sleep more soundly because you the way the body's hormones works, I think. But um, yeah, so this way it definitely feels easier. <laughs> <laughs> so that, with that being such a yeah. big transition, does that yeah. do anything else to the rest of your planning as far as training or, or trying to stay mentally involved in the, the racing and, and yeah. making keeping on top of your health, anything yeah. like that? Does that cause any sort of issue? Um, no, because I've been trying to stay on top of that for, I don't know, forever it seems. <laughs> and I just try to dial it in every year. And as I get older, like, I, like my body's changing every year and I feel like my training's a little different, the racing's a little different. Like I, I adapt to things a little differently. So I just try to um, kind of keep track of how I'm feeling and make sure I'm getting good sleep and eating well and training well and just listen to my body. Um, and knowing that you know some days aren't going to be great and maybe some days I want to go out training but I'm super tired and just need to take some rest. So um, I'm just trying to kind of take each day as it comes with you know big picture in mind. But uh, I feel good. I'm loving the racing in Europe. I've been really enjoying it and um, I just really like racing my bike. So I'm happy to keep doing it. Well, it's certainly interesting yeah. to watch. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.